21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. A stick-up? Well, where? East what? Do both of them have guns? Where is this, in the liquor store? All right, I'll send the officers right over. You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Hello, CB. Sergeant Burns at the 21st. At the liquor store, 192 East 77. There's a robbery in progress. That's right, a robbery in progress. Two armed men. Okay. Yeah. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. It happened at 10.55 p.m. Sector car number four of the 21st was on patrol on Lexington Avenue in the 70s with patrolman Daniel Mercado as operator and patrolman Horace Nelson as recorder. It had been a quiet tour. And what did he say? Oh, he didn't say much, Dan. Said if I wasn't satisfied with the views, they'd give me something else. Well, I told him I was satisfied, all right. It's just they were ripping on the heel. It's almost 55, Nellie. We better ring in. Yeah. So what happened? They gave me a new pair. I got them on. That was nice, right. didn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Solomon Nelson, Sector Car 4, Box 11. Okay. Uh-huh. What do you have for us? Nothing. Car 681, K. Car 681 at Lexington and 73rd. K? Okay. At 
I'm the luckiest guy in the world. While the apprehension of this holdup man occurred, I, as ranking officer on duty in the 6th Division, was at the emergency ward at Metropolitan Hospital interviewing the patrolman who had been injured in the 17th. Lieutenant Snyder, the desk officer at the 21st, reached me on the telephone at the hospital to inform me of the occurrence and the shooting. He reported that detectives of the 21st squad under the command of Lieutenant Matt King were on the job, that the second holdup man had run to 3rd Avenue and escaped, and that the ambulance was en route to Metropolitan Hospital with the wounded suspect. I walked outside the emergency room door to await the ambulance. As I heard it approach, a car pulled up to the door. It was Lieutenant King. Okay, Whitey. Hello, Matt. Captain. Pull it over on the lot and come on inside. How'd you get here so fast, Captain? Oh, I was here. A cop was hurt down on the 17th. I had to make the investigation. Oh, very bad. No, it doesn't look too bad. He fell through a broken step in a condemned building trying to run some kids out. His legs all scratched up. Doctor says that's about all. What have you got? One of your men made a good collar. Nelson. Yeah, I heard about that. How bad is this boy shot? Not too bad, I hope. I'm glad I want to find out from him. His partner got away from us. You got to know where he is. Did he tell you anything over there, man? <laughs> he wouldn't give me the right time of day. All right. Can you be with him now? All right. Roll it out. I was there. Take my jacket. Don't forget my jacket. All right. I got this, then. Go on. Easy there, watch it. I'm okay. Go ahead. Hello, Captain. Hi, lift it high. Nelson, nice job. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Easy, will you? Hurt. Okay, back here. Go ahead. Want to come inside, Captain? Yeah, sure, man. Watch it going through the door. This kid might be able to clear a whole string of robberies for us. I hope so. All right, up on the table with him. Watch it now. Take it easy, will you? That's it. Up with him. Hey, hey, for crying out loud. Oh, brother, oh, brother. All right, I'll lay back there. Doctor. Yes, Lieutenant. I'll see you for a minute. You fellas sure are keeping us stepping tonight. You know Captain Canelli. Oh, yes, sure. How are you, Doctor? Can I talk to him while you examine him? Well, I don't see why not. His buddy got away from us. We'd like to be there waiting when he likes. All right, you won't bother me. All right, son, let's have a look. Just take it easy now, will you? Let's kill him. You're lucky it didn't. Everybody says I'm so lucky. It's all over on your side there. Uh, give him a hand, please, will you, officer? Oh, yeah, sure. Come on. Easy, will you? Oh. That's good. Who was with you, Arthur? Who was with me where? Hey, what are you going to do with the scissors? You're not going to cut the shirt. How are we going to get it off? Well, you don't have to cut it. No good. It's got a hole in it full of blood. Bucks. Six bucks down the drain. Who got my jacket? First my jacket. I've got it. Is there a bullet hole in that, too? Yep. Yeah. Lousy shin. That's all I can say. We want you to say a lot more than that, Arthur. Look, I'm busy now. Oh, take it easy, Doc. What are you doing? Why, Phil? Who is he, Arthur? No, you're wasting your time. I got lots of it. Maybe you have it. I haven't. Now, listen to me, boy. You're in a big jam. You tried to hike the liquor store, and you took a couple of shots at a policeman. You got stung yourself for your trouble. You're through being a wise guy. You're through for a long time being a wise guy. This is going to sting. Hold still. Ow! Take it easy. What, are you trying to kill me? I'm trying to cure you. Why? I don't know. Who is he, Arthur? Hey, Doc, cut it out. If you don't help us, it might take a little longer, but we'll get him anyway. What good is it doing you, him walking around and you here? Let me alone. I don't know anything. Listen, boy, we've got the cards out of your pocket. We know your name and where you live. We'll find out who your friends are. We'll go around and talk to every one of them. We'll find the guy. Don't worry about that. All we're asking you to do is save us a little time. What are you to me I should save you time? I don't care anything about saving you time. You put a bullet through me and you want me to save you time. All right, hold still. Ow! Oh, cut it out! All right, we're through for a while, Captain Lieutenant. What's it look like, Doctor? Well, it's in there pretty deep. I don't think he's in too bad shape. It'll be a while before there's any help to you, Matt. Hmm. I, uh... Better send upstairs for pictures and get the resident surgeon in here. He's going to have to do some deep cutting. Hey, Doc, come here. Why are you leaving me alone? Lay back there. Sure wants service, doesn't he? Excuse me. Sure. All right, what's the trouble? Let's kill him. Well, he's not going to be much help. Looks like we're going to have a busy time with him, Captain. Yeah, but she'd be a lot busier, Matt, if he were running around loose. 
are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Frank Kennelly. Lieutenant King and detectives under his command continued to question the suspect until he was taken upstairs to the operating room. I returned to the 17th Precinct to enter the report of my investigation concerning the injured police officer and the blotter. It wasn't until after 1 a.m. that I got back to the 21st. There I saw Lieutenant King. He told me that Arthur Rollins had not given him any further information before he underwent surgery for the removal of the bullet, and that he was still under anesthesia being guarded by a patrolman detailed from the 21st. By then, the case had taken a new turn. Another holdup had occurred in the 28th precinct on the upper west side of Manhattan. One man. He had entered a bar and grill and stuck up the bartender and two customers. One of the customers put up a fight. He was shot and killed. The killer was described as about the same age, weight, and height, and as wearing the same kind of clothing as the man who escaped in the 21st. It appeared to be the same man. By 8 a.m., when I signed the blotter and left the precinct to go off duty for 24 hours, detectives had still not been able to talk to Arthur Rollins. It was later in the morning before his condition permitted an interview. I wouldn't press him too hard yet, Lieutenant. He's not completely out of it. All right, Doctor. You want to stand by while I talk to him? No, no, that's all right. No. Good luck. Thanks. Yes, sir? I'm Lieutenant King. Yes, sir, I know. Patrolman Mercado, Lieutenant. How's he doing? How do you think I'm doing? He's doing all right. The doctor says it's all right for me to talk to him. Yes, sir. Make an entry in your memorandum book that I talked to him and I'll sign it. Okay, Lieutenant. <clears throat> well, how are you doing, Arthur? How do you think? You're in a lot of trouble, you know that. Yeah, I know it. Who is that with you? Who was it? Look, you're wasting your time. I've got plenty of it to waste, Arthur. Your partner, whoever he was, decided that one close call wasn't enough for him last night. Went up to the 25th, held up a bar, and killed a customer. The man is wanted for murder. Now, who was he? I don't know. Some guy, some guy I just met. Now, listen to me, Arthur. We want a little help from you. There's a lot more involved now than just another stick-up. There's a homicide involved. You know who the guy is. There'll be a lot of people here to talk to you today. Be homicide detectives and detectives from the 25th and somebody from the DA's office. I want to stop playing around. We want to know everything you know, and we want to know it fast. Now, how about it? They asked you how about it. Nothing about it. I can't tell you what I don't know, and I don't know a thing. Not a thing. That's the way it went during the whole day. Detectives from the various commands involved talked to Arthur for as long as the medical authorities would permit. They got no help. In the meantime, other detectives attempted to trace him out through his present address, his friends, and the people he did business with. All of these knew little more about him than he had already revealed. By the following morning, the investigation had moved forward hardly an inch. At 7.30 a.m., I walked into the muster room where Lieutenant Snyder was desk officer and Sergeant Burns was on telephone switchboard duty. Morning, Captain. Sergeant? I have a few messages for you. All right, I'll get them as soon as I sign the blotter. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Patrolman Mercado, Box 26. Well, listen, Connor is taking a prisoner to court. You put out his school stanchions before you're relieved, okay? Yes, sir. All right. You got those messages, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Oh, thanks. And that young woman is waiting to see you, Captain. Who is she? Do you know? Yes, sir. She says her name is Mrs. Rollins. Mrs. Ellie Rollins. She any relation to that Arthur Rollins over in Metropolitan? Oh, I didn't ask her, Captain. Is he still there? Yes, sir. Why oh, haven't they moved into Bellevue? We can't spare a man off of every platoon to guard him. Well, Lieutenant Snyder spoke to the doctor during the night, Captain. He can't be moved yet. All right. Let me know when they're ready to turn out. Yes, sir. Did you want to see me, Mrs. Rollins? Are you the commanding officer? That's right. I'm Captain Kennelly. They told me I'd have to get permission from the commanding officer to visit my husband in the hospital. Is your husband Arthur Rollins? Yes, that's right. Oh. Would you come into my office, please? Yes, thanks. Thank you very much. Did you have a seat? Thank you very much. Well, uh, this is Wednesday morning. Your husband has been in the hospital since Monday night. Haven't you been able to see him since then? Well, no. I, I didn't even know about it. You see, we haven't been living together, not for five or six months. 
Where do you live? Me? I live over in Jersey, Newark. Been living there ever since we separated. It just happened that a friend of mine brought home a New York paper last night, and I saw it in there. Just an accident that I know about it. How did you find out that you have to get my permission? Well, you see, after I found out last night, I called the hospital on the telephone. I asked if I could visit Arthur. He told me he was a prisoner, and I'd have to get permission of the commanding officer of the 21st precinct. Who told you? I don't know. Whoever answers the phone there, the switchboard operator, I guess. Mm-hmm. Then I called here on the phone. They told me you wouldn't be into work till 8 o'clock this morning. I couldn't see any use coming until now. I see. Is he in very bad trouble? I mean, is it the... It's robbery, assault, and violation of the gun law. Oh. Serious enough. I don't understand how he could do anything like that. He's not bad. He really isn't. He's all right. Badly? You didn't think so. You broke up with him. That was over something else altogether. It wasn't his fault. I guess it was just as much mine. Could I get permission to see him? That's what the rules say, isn't it? You can give me permission. Well, the rules also say that in felony cases where an investigation is being conducted, the commanding officer must consult with the detective squad commander before giving any such authorization. Oh. Have uh, any detectives talked to you about Arthur? No. I wouldn't know anything about what he was supposed to have done. I haven't seen him in months, but... He didn't even know where I was. Well, then why do you want to see him now? Well, after all, I'm his wife. All right, Miss Rollins. You just wait here. I'll go talk to Lieutenant King about it. Who's Lieutenant King? He's in charge of detectives in the 21st Squad. Oh. Why did there have to be so many people involved? So many people. You'll have to take that up with Arthur. Maybe he's got the answer. I'll be back in a few minutes. I walked across the muster room to the desk where I instructed both Lieutenant Snyder and Sergeant Burns to keep an eye on the young woman in my office and to detain her if she attempted to leave. Sergeant Burns told me that Lieutenant King was on the job upstairs, so I walked through the back room where the men of the day tour were going over the alarms preparatory to the turnaround. I went up the worn stairs to the second floor and into the 21st squad office. Matt? Hello, Captain. All right, Whitey, go check it out. You too, Fox. Okay, Lieutenant. Yes, sir, Captain. How are you doing with that Arthur Rollins, Smith? Now well, he's still in Metropolitan. He'll probably be able to move him to Bellevue today, what the doctor said. Has he been any help to you? Help to nothing. I've been over there myself three times to talk to him. Men from the 25th, the Homicide Squad, and the DA's office were there almost all day yesterday. He won't say who the second man was. He won't say anything. The girl who claims to be his wife is downstairs. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's all? Yeah. She yeah. wants an authorization to visit him. Okay. Didn't know he had a wife. Look, there's a lot of things we didn't know about him. Can we go talk to him? Sure. Whitey, I'll be down in the captain's office. All right, Lieutenant. I don't know what the boy's holding back for him. He's got nothing to lose. All he can do is gain by helping us. If he helps us clear a homicide he had nothing to do with, he deserves some kind of break. Well, maybe he'll still help you. Here. Oh, that kid, all he's got for an answer is no. So you didn't even know he was married. Good morning, Captain. Nelson? No, I didn't say anything. Nobody up where he's living now knew that he was married. This boy doesn't do much talking any place he goes. Go ahead, Matt. Thanks. Uh, Miss Rollins? This is Lieutenant King. Hello. How do you do? Can I get to see Arthur? That's what I came all the way over here for. I don't see why I have to go through so much red tape just to see my own husband. He's being held on a charge of robbery. I know that. And he hasn't been very helpful. We're still investigating to find out who was with him when he held up that liquor store. Would you know who it might be? No. How would I know? I haven't seen Arthur in months. How long has it been since you were living with him? I don't know. Four or five months. Where did you live? In New York? Yes, that's right. In New York. In Washington Heights. Why did you break up? It's an awfully long story. We'd like to know why. Well, you see, he was in service in the Army. He got married when he first went in, and then he went away first to Texas, and he went to Korea. Well, he wasn't any hero or anything, but he was there. He was in for two years. Where were you, meanwhile, in Washington Heights? No, no, I was home, living with my folks. When he got out, they found his apartment in Washington Heights, just three rooms, but that was big enough. When was that? 
About a year ago. Late last summer, I guess, a little more than a year ago. Did he have a job? Yes, so did I. Started out in the post office. You know, delivering special deliveries. It was just temporary, and he didn't like it, so he tried to get into building and construction work. Yes? Well, I thought the post office was much better, for him at least, but he wanted to work with his brother. His brother's in construction work. He, he works in, the, what do you call it, the excavation when they have to dig a foundation for a new building. That's what he does. Where does his brother live, in New York? In Brooklyn. Told me how much more money he's making and everything like that, but I said... Maybe your brother makes more when he's working, but there's time between jobs and all that, and you're better off in the post office. You're sure of it every week. But he couldn't say it. Was that the cause of the breakup? No, I couldn't say that. The only thing about it was that he always wanted to do everything his brother did. Joe, that's his brother. Joe this and Joe that. That's all I ever heard. Every time we had to make a move, we couldn't do it without consulting Joe. Just got fed up with it, that's all. I said one day, who are you married to, me or Joe? It didn't last long after that. One night I said, Arthur, I'm leaving. He said, okay. That was that. I guess it was neutral. After all, he was in the army. He was a married man. He didn't have to go to his big brother anymore for every little thing. Has Arthur ever been arrested before? No. At least not before we broke up. Has Joe? His brother? Yes. I don't know. I don't care anything about Joe. Nothing but those sick of him. I don't know. Did Arthur go to work on a construction job? Yes, I think so. At least I, I know he quit the post office. Did Joe marry? Hmm? No. Not unless it was very recently. Listen, can I go over to see Arthur? It's all right with me, Captain. Excuse me. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Sergeant Burns, Captain. They're ready to turn out. All right, I'll be right there. Yes, sir. Can I? I'll uh, give you an authorization. Uh, as soon as I turn out the platoon. About five minutes. Captain. Yes, man. Tell you what I'll do. No, I'll take her over there myself, Captain. Yeah, maybe she can get him to talk. You don't really need her now, do you? You know who you're after. Well, she's entitled to visit her husband. Five minutes. Yes. What What did he mean? When? Turn out the platoon. I got the men who were working the next shift on the job. Oh. So it's something, isn't it? Yes, it's always something. I turned out the platoon for the day tour and returned to my office where Lieutenant King and Mrs. Rollins were waiting. Patrolman Fallon, the 124 man, came in and I instructed him to write up the authorization for Mrs. Rawlins to visit her husband. In the company of myself, Lieutenant King, and Detective Whitey Howard of the 21st Squad, she went to Metropolitan Hospital. As there's no prison ward at Metropolitan, a patrolman from the 21st had been assigned to guard Arthur Rawlins. As we walked down the long corridor, I could see through the open door of the room he occupied. Patrolman Nelson was inside, sitting in a chair beside the bed. Down at the end. There's his doctor. No, Is he good? The doctor, I mean? Very good. Doctor? Hello, Captain. Lieutenant. Doctor. Well, how's the patient? In pretty good condition. Uh, this is Mrs. Rollins. Oh, yes. How do you do? Hello. Doctor, how soon do you think he can be moved to Bellevue? I've got three men tied up here on guard duty. I'd like to get him back on the job. Perhaps this afternoon. Oh, good. Uh, doctor, there won't be anything permanent. Damage to him, I need mean. Well, hey, excuse me, I want to talk to the officer on guard duty. Oh, go right in, Captain. Thank you. Oh, it'd be too bad if there was. He's always been so hard. Hello, Nelson. Captain. He's not giving you any trouble, is he? No, sir. How are you feeling, Arthur? Great. Just great. Don't complain, boy. You were shooting at the officer. He didn't have time to stand around and talk about it. Captain, while you're here, can I be excused in a personal? Yes, yeah, sure, Nelson. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Arthur, I understand you haven't been much help to the officers who've been around to talk to you. Why should I be any help? What have you guys done for me? We brought you a visitor, Arthur. Yeah? Who? She'll be right in. Who's she? Arthur. Ellie. All right, just lie still. Hello, Arthur. Oh, what'd you have to come for? 
Why'd you have to see me like this? I didn't want you to come. I didn't want anybody. I saw it in the paper, Arthur. I had to come. Oh, go on. Get out. I don't want you here. Arthur? I don't. You don't always get what you want, do you? You found that out. Oh. You're back. Huh? Well, you're wasting your time. I told you yesterday I'm not saying anything to you. I'm not saying a word. Maybe it's time for me to do a little talking, boy. You don't have to. I know what the score is. I know who was with you and who shot the man on the 25th. What do you mean? That was your brother along with you, wasn't it? Listen, if you... Lie think... back there, boy. Wasn't it? You told him, didn't you, Ellie? You told him. How would I know? I didn't tell them anything, I... She didn't have to, boy. Yeah, it was Joe. Arthur, you're crazy. You're just plain crazy. Oh, you're not telling me anything. I know it. Where is Joe? Look, you know who it was. Isn't that enough for you? We have to get him. Then it'll be enough. How'd he talk you into this, Arthur? That wasn't hard. I was broke, so was he. It's a fine way to cure being broke. I don't know. We didn't work in six weeks. The trucks were pulled out on strike, so there wasn't any work. We were just sitting around and talking. He said it like a joke. You know, we got to go stick up someplace. First thing you know, we were getting serious about it. We had a couple of places picked out. He had one gun. We borrowed another one from a friend of his. That was that. Arthur, I'm ashamed of you. Oh, look, baby, don't rub it in. Where is he now? You'll have to find that out for yourself. We will. You can count on it. Now, I didn't say anything about him. I kept my mouth shut. You remember that. I didn't say a word about him. Talking about him wouldn't have been so bad, Arthur. You made your mistake listening to him. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Burns. You caught a what? A burglar? You're using the butcher knife on the burglar? Well, where is this? Where? And so it goes around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. <laughs> 